Please turn on your camera so we can see you, my dear. Okay. So welcome everyone to today's um, coaching with me, Miranda, or with me, Mimi. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to pass your Scrum interview. This session is not only for those who have not been able to pass or make, um, make it to the job offer. It's for... It's also for those who who plan to maybe coach someday. You can be a coach someday and some of these skills or some of these um, ideas that I will give out today could be helpful for um, using it even on your team, with friends or your personal use. So first thing first, we want to understand what an interview is. When you understand what an interview is, you'll be able to, I believe you'll be able to pass it. So an interview is, um, I'll just say it's a session or it's a time box period. It's a time box period where um, you are being asked questions about yourself, about your experience, about your, your background and what you, you want to offer in the company that you apply to work for. So basically it's a time box period where you sell yourself, where you sell the skills that you have acquired through education and through work. That is what an interview is. Now, when you have this mindset of what an interview is, you will prepare yourself better. But if you just say, oh, I have an interview, you don't know what an interview, an interview entails, you are bound to be overwhelmed. You are bound to be confused. So the first point, I have a couple of points down here that I want to list. Now that I talk about what an interview is, I'll strike it. So that is done. I'm using, so I'm going to be using some Scrum words and Scrum terms or Agile words and terms in here that you can also use to apply to your life, daily life or your daily routines, whatever the case may be. So, <clears throat> you know, things are moved from doing or from um, to do, doing, and then done. So I have a to-do list here. And because I have talked about what an interview is, I'm going to done it. All right. So the first thing that I do before an interview is prepare my resume. And then if I wanted to target maybe a hospital, for example, as a scrum master, maybe I was looking for a scrum master role in a hospital. I would um, tell out or target my resume towards that, that job position that was applied, that, that was advertised, the job description. And maybe if I wanted the IT field, I'll do the same thing and just make some few adjustments and to make the, the company know that I have the skills that they are looking for just make a little bit of adjustments here and there just to polish or polish your resume. That's the first thing you wanna do before you get to the level where you have an interview. You adjust your resume and make it look appealing to whomever is gonna be reading it. And in on your resume, you're selling yourself. You're telling them the skills they are looking for, you have these skills and you are ready to come on board and execute this, these skills as a team member or a team player. Now, after doing that, they give you a call and say, um, you have an interview with us, right? First, the, the hiring manager would call you to say, or the recruiter, some people go through recruiters, some people go directly to companies. And then they will call you and say, you have to schedule an interview with us. We, we found your interview and we are interested in the, your skills and qualifications. You schedule that interview with them. That's your first interview. You have to keep in mind that in, in your life before getting a job, right? You would have to, to have gone through at least five interviews before getting the job. Like five real interviews before maybe this five to eight. I'll put it five to eight. So do not be overwhelmed if you have done a couple of interviews and you've not heard back from them. These interviews that you have done and you have not heard back from them should be um, should be pillars, should be the foundation towards achieving 
the job that you're looking for. It should help prepare you for the future jobs that you're apply applying for. So I don't know if you understand. Maybe first interview, you did not get it. It becomes the first tone, the first foundation. You have learned some things in that interview. The second one, you did not get it. That's another tone on top of the old one. You're not, you're getting stronger. And then finally, maybe you do the seed one or the seven one or the eight one. And then the nine one is that final one because you have taken all the experience from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and number nine, boom, you get it. So you should not be discouraged and you do not think like, oh, am I ever even going to get this job? It could take you even 20 interviews to get that right one. Always keep in mind that fingers are not the same. Somebody could take them just the first one and they get that interview and they get that job. They could maybe they saw their, themselves better than you did or maybe they found favor in the eyes of the person that was interviewing them fingers are not the same and when you keep in mind that no matter what i'm getting this job even if i have to do 50 interviews i'm getting this job right and then also know that the scrum market is very saturated and companies are doing a lot of interview you are not the only one interviewing so if they say no to you do not be be be, be bothered just take that experience and move it forward to the next experience or to the next interview, making sure knowing that this time around you're going in there knowing that, oh, they could ask me what MVP is. I did not know that they could ask me that and I was tamer. I don't know what that is, but they asked me in the previous interview. So I have to prepare for this new interview so that if they ask me a question, I'm not going to stammer or I'm not going to uh, sound dumb. You know, so you want to understand the interview, the interviewing process of a company or of the, the, the scrum wall before diving into it. So the first one is you have to pray if when you are scheduled for an interview, I am a, a, a God fearing woman. So the first thing I do is I pray and I give God that interview and I tell God this is how I pray. I tell God. May I find favor in the eyes of my the person that will be interviewing me? It's like the meeting where you have jo Jacob and Esau meeting, and Jacob was saying, "My brother should I should find favor in the eyes of my brother so he can forgive me for what I have done and stuff like that, right? So you want to pray for the person that is interviewing you to be on their right senses, should not be a racist, should not be somebody that is just looking for a particular kind of person or to waste your time. If you are a prayerful person or if you are a God-fearing person, this is for those of those of us who um, trust the, uh, God's plan for our life. Pray that you find favor in the eyes of the person that is interviewing you and you also find favor in their eyes too as well. Now, the second one would be to be confident. You have to be confident when they schedule you for an interview, do not be afraid. Rather, I will tell you that be confident, know that, what you have, what they have seen on your resume, they trust that you can deliver. That is why they have chosen you. For your resume to even stand out, for them to even say, we want to talk to you with regards to the skills that we have seen on your resume and it matches what we are looking for, that alone should build some, some courage, should, should, should make you confident. Like you should be, you should know that Inside that thousand of resumes that they have they have found or they have seen, yours stood out, meaning there is something. So you have to build your 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 yourself on that. That is what you have to use as your pillar to be strong. Tell tell yourself, oh wow, there are twenty thousand people who have applied for this job, and this company wants to interview me. That means they found something that they found something in me that um. I should be able to sell to them, selling yourself to them, right? Now, the second one will be to master your resume. Do not go for an interview without understanding your resume. Do not go for an interview without understanding, especially your start dates and your end dates, because sometimes these things can throw you off when they ask you some questions with regards to the gaps on your interview. You should be able to say, I was I went back to school. Uh, I was doing a research during this pro this period. I was doing a, a a project. I was doing a project 
during this period and you understand what your resume is all about, right? So you want to master your resume and then you also want to research the company. That's the fourth, the third, no, yeah, the fourth thing. Research the company. Let's say for example, a company ABC has sent you an email saying that you are, um, you have an interview with them, for example. You want to research that company. You want to know the company's mission, the company's vision and its culture. You want to know all of this about the company before you even interview. You cannot just get up a company ABC says, oh, you have an interview and you just show up. Although some interviewers will tell you at the beginning of the interview what they, they are or who they are, right? Some might as well ask you even. I have had interviews where they have had to ask me who they are. And because I did my homework, I always answer who they are because I know that I am supposed to know who I'm interviewing for. Other times, you cannot only end by researching the company, but you can also go on LinkedIn. And if the interviewer had given you their name, their two names, right? You can also go on LinkedIn to search them, to, to, to search that name up. Yes, it is, it is very legal to do that. You search them up so that you are you are prepared. You don't know if that Lee, Lee John Ming, for example, right, is a male or a female. You don't know the position they are handling. They just schedule you. They say, oh, you'll be meeting tomorrow. Uh, you have an interview scheduled tomorrow with this person. You can always go on LinkedIn to put up their name. These are things that I do. Pull up their name. Look at their profile. Look at what they do for the company that they work in. So that when you are selling yourself to them, let's say, for example, they, they've had experience in Scrum Master, for example. One time I was interviewing with a manager who had a, who had a Scrum Master background, who had project management background. This now tells me that this is, this is somebody who knows what they are looking for. It's not just any kind of recruit is it's not just an, a recruiter who does not know what Scrum is all about. So there is no how I can beat around the bush, but rather prepare very well for this interview and also helps me to understand or to know what or to, to, to know what to expect, given that he has been in the Scrum field. So I don't know if somebody is, is enjoying what I'm saying, if it, what I'm saying from so far is making sense. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you, Asim. So you want to do that little bit of background research on them. They have done their own background research on you and that's why they chose you. you. You need to know that they have done their research on you. So you have to do your own research on them. There's no harm in doing that. Yes, do your research, know the person that you're meeting, if they have a LinkedIn profile, good. If they don't, sometimes even when I don't see a LinkedIn profile, I Google them. I try to Google them just to make sure who am I meeting? Is it a male or a female or what's their position and stuff like that? Just to know more about the person that I am meeting because the person too might have done a little bit of research on me too. So the next one would be to prepare mentally and physically. How do you prepare for an interview mentally and physically? You know that you have an interview. Like I said, after you pray, the next one is to be confident. You know that you have an interview. So your mind, you have a, an interview stay scheduled tomorrow, Monday at 10 a.m., right? 10 a.m. is my favorite time that I always give this company for an interview. <clears throat> I say 10 to 11. Or I said two to three, between two to three and then 10 to 11, because you also want to give a time period where everyone has just, everyone who turned on their computer has calmed down, has processed, has settled in. And they want to give an afternoon time where they have gone for lunch, they have eaten, they have also settled in. Don't want to give a time when their workload is too much like that. So let's say you have an interview tomorrow scheduled for 10 a.m. How do you prepare mentally? Your brain is telling you, 
your brain must would be reminding you don't forget your interview tomorrow don't forget your interview tomorrow during that time it is the time when you used to 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 prep yourself to to research the company to make a small note to make sticky notes cheat sheet it is very okay for you to make those cheat sheets and put them around your your computer to remind you because these people also make their questions to ask you right don't be surprised that some of them on the back end even write who we are just to on sticky notes to put just to, to talk about their 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 company too so physically you want to also look uh, mentally you prepare yourself by researching the company make sure you have your resume ready make sure you have read gone through your resume again you have gone through the job description that's you preparing mentally you have gone through the job description and looking those things in your resume that has has aligned with the job description that has made them to choose you you will be that most definitely if you put your resume alongside the job description you will see those things there you will be able to highlight those things on your resume that has has made you to um has made them to 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 find you worthy of working in their company right now you prepare physically you don't just show up even even if it's just going to be a phone interview you don't want to just wear um maybe it's just me but you don't want to just wear t-shirt and and, and just say, oh, it's just going to be a phone interview and stuff. Usually, I'm always preparing for the unforeseen. What if they turn that interview into a video interview? You never can tell these days. You can be showing, they can call you on the phone and say, okay, they just move you and immediately and say, okay, let's, I've had somebody who went for, uh, a, who did a phone interview and immediately, they move they move him it's a him they move him from that phone interview and then they say let's give you uh if you're not uh, properly dressed for the next interview let's give you one or two uh, minutes how many minutes do you think you can take to get ready for the for the next interview because you you did well for this interview do you have time because my manager i've looked on my manager's calendar now it's free and i can just call them to do the next follow up interview with you he said sure why not that he he was ready as the way he was right now he said he was ready that the manager can even join in on the teams uh the call they were doing right they now went on on teams he did not have to go change because he was wearing his shirt he was dressed for the for the the interview and after that, just because of that, the fact that they did not have to wait for him to go and change and wear a, 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 a business casual or anything like that, or corporate dress corporate, it was a plus on his side. He ended up getting that job on the same day. They just kept moving him like that. He did four interviews that same day and they, get, they gave him that job. That's why I say some people, and that was his first interview. That's why I say some people are different with the way they will get their own job. And do not compare yourself with them. It may take you the 10th to get yours. It may take you even the 50 to get yours, but the truth is you will get it. That's what matters. The end. Not you not get not giving up. So you want to physically prepare, even though it's over the phone. You want to look good. You don't know what will happen. Then if it is a video interview, you want to dress professional. You don't want to go looking shabby. Somebody like me, I know myself. I'm I'm not going for an for an interview without really looking good. I make sure I look good physically. <laughs> I make sure I look good, so that when you're interviewing me, you know this girl is not did not come here to play. Even if I have to show on site, my my pants is there ready for me to wear. My jacket, my shirt, whatever it is, my flats, shoes that is comfortable for me to wear and walk into your office without you looking at like at me from head to toe because of the noise that my shoe is making. You know, you want to be professional. You want to sell yourself. It, it begins by your personality or it begins with your personality, the way you present yourself. Somebody can just fall in love with you just looking at you physically and say, oh no, this person is professional, you know? So the next one will be asked for, at, you have to ask, prepare yourself, prepare at least five interview questions to ask at the end or during the interview. And one of the questions that you must ask an interviewer is, how many rounds of interview does your company do? 
If you don't have any question to ask, always ask that. That helps to prepare you for the, the next interview. An interview that I did um, two weeks ago, or no, not two weeks ago, recently, I asked the interviewer how many rounds of interview. She said, after me, you talk to the manager and that will be it, right? But there are ones that I did not ask how many rounds because I forgot and they made me do up to six. They made me do up to four, five different like that. So always ask them how many rounds of interview are there for this job description. Ask them questions about your team members, the team members you're going to be joining. What's the size? Who are the members of that team? These questions tell the interviewer that you are prepared. You can prepare. Ask them questions about the company. Not just only you, 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 what, how it's going to ask them questions about the company, who their biggest um, competitors are, if they have any. These are the kind of questions you want to ask them. Ask them questions since we had the pandemic. What, what changes has the company made to help um, employers or employees rather? Ask them these types of questions that will make them know that we are hire, hiring somebody who is smart and who knows what they are out there looking for. And then I, I should have linked that question to this one, but I'll just keep going down until I get to it. You also want to use good choice of words. You cannot be going to a scrum interview. You don't know what, um, you don't know what, let's say for example, um, a retrospective is. You don't know what even scrum is. You don't even know what agile is. You have to master some, prepare some words that you will use during your introduction that will sell you, that will make them know that this person actually is actually an agile coach. For you to bring out these terms or these words, right? Keywords, pick out some keywords to use. Remember that Scrum is not a technical role. You don't want to be too, 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 um, too technical about it. Scrum is a process. It's a concept. It's a framework. When you begin to sell yourself using some of these words, right? You're talking during your interview, doing your, your, your tell me about yourself. You're bringing in some of these, these key words inside the, your introduction or when you talk, it's telling them that this person know what they are doing, right? And like when I started, I talk about to do, I talk about, um, yes, to do, doing, and done, right? I have done already 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Yes, we are now in 0 0.7. Actually, I think I have 11 points here. So by the time I'm done with this, this 0 0.7, to use good choice of words, I would done it like that, right? So you want to talk about the keywords and then, also look at the company's uh, job description and pick out pick out those keywords, highlight them. They say they are looking for, for a scrum master with, uh, 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 let's say with agile skills or agile coaching skills, whatever the case may be, to come and help them with their new team, right? You want to highlight these keywords so that when you are selling yourself, you are talking about a time when you perform some of those skills that were described on the job description that they are looking for, right? Then the next thing would be understand the, the nature of your, your soft skills, right? Then I added here, I wrote that um, Scrum is a concept. Bring your personality to the table, the Scrum process, everything. That's what I wrote under, under this point. Understand the nature of your soft skills. Understand the Scrum framework and improve or, or work on your personality. As for a Scrum master to be a Scrum master, you already know the roles that a Scrum master plays in an organization or on a team or in a team. You already know these rules and you want to be selling these capabilities. You want to talk as if you're already that coach. 
they cannot be asking you question. You're just dra dra dragging yourself to talk and just making the interview boring for them. Sometimes you even want to 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 lead, to take not lead like um bad leadership, but you want to lead in a way where this this they see that you have that caution in you, right? Like let's let me give an example for this point to be understood. Like an interview that I recently did, um, the lady asked me um to talk about the scrum events. She just said, talk about the scrum events. And I asked her, what would you want me to talk about the scrum events? Do you want me to coach you? Should I talk about it as if you're, you're hearing it for the first time? How would you want, what do you want to know about the scrum events so that I can better help you understand what the scrum events are or is? And she said, um... I don't know if the scrum events are four or are five. I said, okay, that alone has helped me to be able to coach you on what the scrum events are. Then I started, I said, well, we have the screen. I will tell you that technically they are like five, but four of these events happen within the spring. We have the spring. It's a two weeks period, two to four weeks period. Um, time box event that happens that most companies will run with two weeks for their spring from planning to retrospective to daily scrum to review now the spring planning is i started breaking it down to her the spring planning is an event that happens or that occurs within a spring where these people these people these people and these people meet to plan for that two week spring so by the time I was done talking about the spring and all the way to the spring planning, I had already discussed the scrum process. That is my personality. At the end of it, she said she has even learned something that she did not even know because she has never heard anything about scrum. Right. She's just recruiting in that company as HR. But now that I've, the way I explain it to, to her, broke it down to her, help her to know that I actually have the coaching skills that they are looking for. And I was like, yeah, yes, 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 right? So you want to be have that personality where you can coach, where you can be able to. Sometimes these people come to interview you and they can just throw something there like they are confused and they expect you to help them. They can say, oh, we don't know, does this the spring review happen before the spring retrospective or how is the daily scrum done? You can hear them just trying to, to, to understand or just talk as if they are confused. That could still be your interview. It could still be a plan to see if you can lead, to see if you can coach. Then you take over because you know what you're doing. That alone can sell you out. When you see that confusion or they are trying to understand what a review is or a retrospective is, is you can now say, oh, um, I don't know if I can help you understand the difference between a review and a retrospective, but um, I would like to, to assist with that if you don't mind. And then they'll tell you, okay, go ahead, tell us what, what is it's all about. That is your coaching skills coming out as a, as a, scrum, um, as a scrum master. So the next one would be to talk about your experience. When you go for an interview, sell yourself. Sell what you have written on that resume. If you say you have had 10 years of working experience, you should be able to defend that 10 years of working experience. Don't say you have 10 years of experience and you cannot even, you don't even know what, what you don't even use the, the terms that they are, they are expecting, the keywords that they are expecting you to use. You're not using those keywords. You're not talking about, a, 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 um, you're not talking about retrospective. You're not talking about spring review. You're not talking about product owner. You're not talking about developers. There was a time when the developer did this, the product owner did this. You're not talking about all of that. You want to sell your experience. You want to sell yourself. Talk about those times in that company where you did a lot of, you performed a lot of, 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 of skills that you had learned from maybe another company and you moved 
into this new company with those skills. And then tell them also the skills that you're bringing to the team. Like I said from the beginning, an interview is just a way of the, 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 the company to know, to know you better to understand your skills better, to hear it from your mouth. They've seen it on a piece of paper. Now they want to hear you talk about it. And also remember that they want to ask you what skills you're bringing to the table. So it's a time for you to sell yourself. Let them know by the end of that interview, let them know this is the candidate for the job, right? Without them having any doubts. And then another thing that I wanted to add here on this particular point, because we have two more points and we'll be done. And then maybe any other questions I'll answer. Another thing I wanted to talk about would be um, when you get to, to an interview and they ask you a question that you don't know, do ne never, even if you don't know, never you say, I don't know. When you, the moment you say, I don't know, it strikes off all those ones that you knew. I don't know if anybody knew that. But these are some of the secrets of interviewing. You would wonder why they never called you back. It's because of that one question that you said, I don't know. So rather than saying that I don't know, for example, they ask you about a software Jira. You've been talking about Kanban. You've been talking about Microsoft Teams. You've been talking about Miro or Miro. You've been talking about Trello. You've been talking about all the other the other tools that are being used in the Scrum world, the Scrum environment, right? And then they just ask you, what is a uh, 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 Jira? Have you used um, Jira before? And you say, no. And you sit quiet. That no. Or, or you say, no, I'm not familiar with it. That one alone will strike them off. A smarter person will answer that question like this. Oh, well, I've heard about um, the uh, Jira too. Um, you are, you are not the first person to talk about Jira. I have heard about it. I have heard about it. And some days back, I was actually doing a little bit of research about it because some friends of mine, who, some Scrum friends, friends of mine have been talking about Jira. And given that you are the fifth or third person talking about uh, this Jira to me today, I should mm -hmm. probably take it serious into doing more research about it like that. That tells them that you are a person who wants to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. It tells them that this person is ready to join our team and get familiar with the tools that they are not familiar with. Don't say, no, I've not heard of it or I've just heard about it just a little bit. No, say that you are not the first person to talk about Jira. I guess this is a skill that I should be adding on my resume because you are the, you're, you're like the third person this week talking about Jira and I've not been taking it serious. It's about time I do more research on, on Jira and add these skills to the ones I already have. Like that. When you answer like that, the interviewer knows that this person means serious business. You have not told them yes and you have not told them no. You have only told them that you want to add more skills to the skills that you have. You have reminded them that you have other skills. I don't know if you get this, the trick in it. You have turned the questions to make that interviewer know that although you do not know Jira, but you know Kanban, you know Trello, you know Monday and other, other tools. I don't know mm -hmm. if somebody got the point. So they, their focus will now be their focus will be removed from you not knowing Jira, but you knowing all the other ones. Say, so, oh wow, um, oh, you are not the, the 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 you are not the first person this week talking about um, uh, Jira. Um, I know a few days back, a friend of mine, we were just discussing other tools to add to the ones we already have or to the ones I already have. Or some days back, I was doing some research. I always use this one. Some days back, I was doing some research on the internet on skills to add to the one I already have or tools to add to the ones I already have. And I came across Jira and ever since I came across Jira, 
I've been reading on the internet about it, doing a little bit of research about it, but I never took it too serious until now that you're talking about it. It's telling me that I actually have to add this Jira skill to the ones I already have. So um, I promise to, to look more into Jira and, and maybe um, see how I can add that, that skills to the one I already have. You're pushing his attention or her attention to focus on the skills you already have. They will not focus. They'll say, oh, if she knows Monday and Microsoft team and Trello and Miro, all these ones. So I think she'll, and Kanban, I think she'll be good to go when we join her on the Jira. And plus she's promising. You're making promises that you want to be better. So talk about, the next point will be to talk about what you bring to the table for the company when you have talked about your experience you've talked about your background you talk about your experience now tell them what you're bringing to the table sell yourself tell them how you are professional tell them how you are you are trustworthy tell them you are a people person tell them you are uh, 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 you are how can i put it you're focused you're committed these are the terms that you're using. These are some of the scrum terms that you're using to, 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 should I, I don't want to use that word. You're, use, you're using to, to, let, to sell yourself. Let me put it like that. You're using these terms to sell yourself. Tell them when you join the team, you, you plan to adapt. You, you, you plan to follow the goals or the objective of the team. You plan to understand your team members and you bring you bring integrity, you bring this, and you bring that to the table. So that they know, and you are picking these things you're saying you are bringing, you're picking them from the job description. So we are looking for somebody who can, you pick out those things like that, and you add it on what you are bringing to the table. That way it sells you and you stand out, right? In my interviews, they have never asked me why do you want to work for our company? Because during my um, tell me about yourself, I always answer that question. In my tell me about yourself section, I always answer like, I think about four different other questions. So you want to talk step by step, step by step, step by step. And then you conclude with saying that um, I ended my last contract in ABC company. And I saw your job description. I thought um, after going through your, your job, the, the mission, after going through the job description, the vision, the mission, and the cultural mindset of your organization, I found it aligning with my skill set and my experience. And that is why I decided to apply to this job position. And I think, I believe that when you hire me for this position, given my background, given my skill set and the experience that I have had, and it aligns with your culture, your mission and your vision, this is these are the skills that I am bringing to the table. You start naming some of those things that they are looking for. Now, the last one would be, be fair with your, your, your wage desire, your salary. Research on that. Research, research on that. Last week I did an interview and they asked me the, 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 the rate I wanted. And I think I told that lady, uh, so I said, say, I said, I said 90 to 130, right? I said 90,000 to 130 and she said well hmm, this position this position the the maximum we can offer for this position is 112,000 I told her that is 112,000 will you be willing to take 112,000 I said um I I kind of kind of said, um, can you give me like a minute or so? Let me do a little bit of calculation in my mind or um, in my head. She said, oh, sure, take your time, you know? And after that, I already knew what I wanted to ask, but I then again, I did not want to sound desperate to just say, yes, I'll take the 112,000, you know? 
So I said, well, um, given a little bit of, given the fact that it's gonna be remote, and then the average income, I was just pulling out this information from places where I know I have had, I have, I was prepared. I said, well, um, I would take the, I would take, I'll be willing to accept the $112,000 because I have, you have told me that there is also a 10% um, bonus that comes with this package every year. And so, I'll be willing to accept the 12,000. So you don't wanna go ask too much. I had researched that company, but I, I was unable to find how much they pay for their Scrum Master because they don't have Scrum Master rules yet. This is a new branch they are setting and they needed a Scrum Master there because the work was too much for the project manager was doing Scrum Master role and they want to, to break it. So, you want to research a company's, um, should I say wish rate for, for that particular position that you apply for? And then you don't want to ask too much. Okay, imagine that I had said from 120 to say 140 or to 130. Then she comes to say, oh, for this position, we are hiring somebody and the maximum we can pay is 112,000. What would have happened? I will not qualify for it because my minimum started at 120. I don't know if somebody understood the sense in it. So you want to make your, you, you, the, the asking wage that you, you want to ask, you want it to be, to be in a way where if they are making an offer, their offer should fall within that range. And then you go with the highest always. Yes, you go with the highest. Oh, then if they say, oh, for this position, we we're going to give you 120. And you had access, for example, you said 90 to 150. And they say, oh, well, for this position, we had planned for one, one, uh, 120, right? You take it. It's not, it's, not, it's not below 90. It's not 150, but it's in between. You, then imagine that if, if, if the company had budgeted maybe, say, 100, and then you ask for 150, or you started asking from maybe 110 or 120. That alone will start telling them maybe we should go with that candidate who asks from 80 to 100. You understand? Because that candidate's, um, 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 that candidate's, um, should I say desire or, or yeah, felt within their range, within, their, within the budget for that particular uh, position. So always make sure that what you're asking is not too much, it's not overwhelming, it's not, it's not, it's not making them think, huh, are we going to, let it be within their range. Say, oh, I have done a little bit of research and in my state or yeah, in my state, um, the, the, the average range is 90,000 to 130 for a scrum master. But given that I have this set of experience and this, I would find myself taking 110 minimum like that. Don't ask too much. That will scare them off. And you begin to wonder why they never called you back. They have taken somebody whose um, salary desired was actually within the range of what they were offering. So these are the few points that um, I put together for us to talk about. You also have to identify from one interview to the other, you need to know those things that you did right in the first interview. You want to do a retrospective for yourself. You want, you want to retro your, <laughs> you want to do a, you want to do a review or a retrospective. However, you can combine a review and a retrospective together. What you did right for that interview and what you did not do right and plan for the next one. The questions that you got right and the ones that you did not get right. If that interview was on Zoom, like it is right here, right? What I do is with my phone, I just record. With my phone, I just pre press like a record on my phone. After the interview, I listen to it when I have time. Maybe I'm lying in bed or doing something. I do an assessment of how I answer that question and prepare myself better for the next one. 
if you have the 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 time to record you record if you don't if you think you cannot be able to record with your phone they sell recorders on amazon for 15 dollars you can buy it, all your interviews, you record them and you prepare yourself. That's why you see somebody who do the first two, three interview, fourth interview, the fifth seat interview, they get the job because they have played those recordings and they have listened to the way they answered the question and say, oh, I should, I could have done better. And then they prepare themselves. The third one, they give it another uh, powerful punch to it, right? And it moves them to the fourth one. And then maybe the fourth one knocks them out. They come back, they play the recording again, they listen to it, they say, oh, I should have given it another powerful punch. It moves them from the fourth round to the fifth round like that before you know it, they get the job. And then also keep in mind that there are different types of questions asked during an interview. Because Chrome is not a technical, technical, technical skills kind, kind of setting or work, or career, it's more has to, it, it has more to do with the concept, the framework, the process. It's more 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 to it is process. Following this step, this step, this step, right? You have to know that the different type of questions that they will ask, be able to differentiate between a yes and no question. They cannot ask you a question that needed yes and no. You give them a scenario answer. You give them an answer for a scenario question. They cannot ask you a question that is a is scenario based, right? And then you tell them yes or no. Be able to differentiate those scenario questions, what a question entails. What do they want me to talk about for this question? For example, they can say, oh, we see that you work at Tuality Hospital, Oregon. You say yes. From, no, from January 2019 to um. January 2020, that's a yes and no question. Yes, I work at Tuality, that's correct. Sometimes I always say that's correct. To make it easier, I say you, 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 that's correct or yes, right? Now a scenario question could be, for example, oh, your product owner and your, your developers are not in good terms with each other or they over talk or your developers over talk each other during a meeting. Or let's say, for example, one stakeholder keeps complaining about um, the product. What do you think or what can you do in this situation? Do you think that the 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 the, the, the team needs to invite the, the 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 developer for any of the ceremonies to be present or do you just let the the stakeholder figure it in, by themselves? You said yes. No, he, this is a scenario question where you have to say, well, the best place for this stakeholder to be at would be the spring retro uh, review. Because they have a problem understanding the product, you would schedule, I would schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with them and explain to them that the retrospective is a time box period where stakeholders, customers, product owner, developers, and myself, we meet to talk about that product to see if it has met specifications, if we need to make some changes, some adjustments in order to, for that product to add value to the business and to the customers. And it is during this meeting that you are able to talk about your concern. So I would like for you and I to schedule a meeting where I can talk to you more about what a spring review is, Mr. Stakeholder, so that you can join us next time. And then you tell them, we have our re spring retro uh, review on Thursdays. I don't know, do you, would you like to join us this Thursday so that that way um, you understand what a retrospective a review is all about? Retrospective is on my mind. <laughs> you understand what a review is all about. That is how you answer that question. So the best place to invite them would be the spring review where they can come and talk about themselves. They can come and talk about the product, what they, they like about the product and what they don't like about the product and what they want to see done. These things, these complaints that they are making, they need to come and talk to the team during that spring review, right? So be able to differentiate the type of questions that you are being asked. Once you are, you are able to figure, figure it out, when they're asking you um, scenario questions from yes and no question, then you'll be able to to excel in your interview.
But remember, confidence. Be confident. Go to the interview. Not some people go to interviews ready, like your mind is telling you that you you it's gonna be too much for you, right? Like it's gonna be too much for you. But your other side of your mind is telling you that no, you've got this, you've got this. Always choose the one that says you've got this because indeed you've got it. Questions? Any questions? If you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask. Otherwise, I will say good luck to your interviews or your upcoming interviews. And I hope that this, this is going to be, I'm definitely recording it so you'll be able to watch over again and learn something. Elsie, you have a question? No? Okay, you don't, you don't, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you for some reason. Anyone with any question? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Let me consult the voice. So I'm, I'm struggling with my, tell me about yourself. So I do, I'm more, I've been in the hospitality industry for many mm -hmm. years. And so I'm transitioning from that to Scrum Master. And so it's getting really hard for me to have that um, Scrum and Agile language with what I'm saying in the tell me about yourself. Because that's what I do. I'm more, it's, it's not coming right. So do you have like a way to like tell me how, you know, like I know on the notes that I took, you were like uh, just try to add the keywords, like, you know, some of those quorum keywords. So how will I add that to like a person uh, like me that have hospitality background? Okay, if I may ask in your hospitality background, do you have like daily meetings? Yeah, uh -huh, daily, yeah. That's, that's a scrum work, daily meetings. That's a scrum word to use, okay. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have like projects that you work on from the beginning and then you see that it's done at the end? Yes. Like if we have events, yes. Events. Exactly. These are the words that they are looking for that you can kind of, um, you can kind of, should I say, in, you can kind of fix them inside the, the scrum, um, Inside the Scrum wall, you can. There is how you can answer questions, or there is how you can talk about yourself. And you say that in your previous role, for example, right? Uh huh. In your previous role, you have helped. You have helped. For example, let's say, what company are you working, or what teams do you work in? Okay, let's say, for example, you can say, "Don't give me a company." You can say, "Um, in my previous role, while working for ABC company." Um, I help with daily meetings. That is a scrum word. I help with daily meetings and during new hire, uh, new hire events. I also help coach new hire employees, help them adjust with, um, with the company's um, culture. Need to pay. Oh, Lord. My daughter needs help. Let me help her use the restroom. Give me one second. Okay. Let's go. And who should come in? Use your two minutes before you break the back.
Oh, I did not remove my volume. Sorry. Sorry, I had to help that little one. And she wants to pee. That's fine. Yeah, it's mommy that she wants. Yeah. So you can incorporate your current skills and make it match Scrum skills. It is okay. very, yeah, it is very possible. You're doing um, hospitality does not mean that you're not doing Scrum um, due to responsibilities. The fact that you're doing daily meetings, in those meetings, what do you guys meet to talk about? You meet to plan for the day. You need to, you, yes. you, yeah, yes, you need to know who is present and who is not present, what is supposed to be done and what is, is in fact, you need to know these this are all scrum things. There's just how you have to adjust them and train and, and fine tune them to match the scrum war. And if there is any impediment. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So you want to use that and you just, that's how you can just twist them to, to make it align with the job description or the rule that you applied for. Okay. You have day, yeah, you, you have those daily meetings, you have these events. In this event, you can talk about you coaching new hires. That is coaching, that is your coaching skills coming up. And this is, I actually do that too. Exa like, exactly. I, it's not like I do that too. Exactly. Okay. You tell them this is what is supposed to be done. This is how it's supposed to be done. And that is you coaching. Okay. Yeah. So you can actually blend your hospitality skills into your scrum skills. What about phone screens? How to really do a good phone screen? Um, a good phone screen as in phone screen interview is that why you're asking? Sorry, I did not get the question right. Yes, as in like a good phone screen interview. Okay, so for the phone phone screen interview, what you need to know is that they are talking. They're gonna be talking. They, they are not really actually gonna be interviewing you like interviewing you. Most of the phone screen interview is to see to 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 understand your background if you were speaking the truth about being a scrum master. So. They are not the ones, the people who do the phone screen, they just want to make sure that what, what um, is on your resume aligns with what you will be saying. They will be asking you, oh, for example, um, they'll tell you more even about the company. The first interview, they tell you more about the company, that phone screen period. They tell you more about the company. They may ask you one or two scrum questions. Like the last one I did, they asked me what MVP was, right? And they asked me what MVP was, and then she asked me about Spring. I remember that there's another one that I have done, and they asked me what the three pillars of Scrum are or is, what I should talk about the three pillars of Scrum. These are teasers, as I call them, to make sure that you are not a catfish Scrum master. You're not fake. Because, for example, if you're applying for a, a Scrum job, you should be able to talk what to tell them what a sprint is. So that first screening interview, you talk, you're talking about your salary desire. You're talking about your availability to start. You're talking about um, you're not you're not you're not even gonna they're they're not gonna ask you tell me about the time when you 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 resolve conflict. Tell me about a time when you were successful, a time when you fail, or what would you do? They will not ask you scenario-based question. They just want to make sure that you have a background in Scrum. They could just tell you to talk about, um, uh, for example, we've heard that in Scrum, it is good to trust. What does that mean? We've heard that in Scrum, there are five events. Can you tell me one about it? These are just teasers to, to, help, you on, to, to help them know that you actually have that Scrum background. It is from your second interview now that you begin to prepare to answer the real Scrum questions and scenario-based questions. The first phone screen interview is just for you to talk about your background, your availability, and the wage that you desire. That's it. The first, the first interview will not, they will not ask you all of that Scrum questions that will just make you know that yes you are, you are from having an interview the first interview is just usually um hey um we saw your resume we are interested 
our company is doing this, doing this. We have a new team. The team you'll be joining has a PO, five developers, a business analyst. They are telling you about their company. And then they say, tell me about yourself. During this first time, you can now talk a little bit about your background. So, oh, you're a Scrum Master. You had your certificate from this um, organization. From this organization, you're welcome, my dear. From this organization to this organization, you've done this, you've worked here, you've worked here. Usually, you just talk like that. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, have you had an interview? Um, have you heard somebody having an interview as, as, as a Scrum Master having um, a case study? A case study. Okay, yeah, I think I've had an interview where they talk about me. That case study could be a project. Mm -hmm. Although the word is sounding case studies, it's, it, it could still be a project. Case study of what? Right? They may be looking for you to talk about a project. And I remember having an interview where I had to talk about a case study where we were doing a survey for that hospital. They were taking a survey to see those who were willing to transition from, how will I put it? Transition into agile. So a, a lot of research was done. And then at the end of the day, we realized that after the survey was done, at the end of the day, or the reviews were done, at the end of the day, we realized that um, uh, uh, most of the, 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 the doctors and nurses in that hospital were actually preferring the switch to Agile. That could be a case study. So when they ask you a question that you do not understand, trust me, do not rush to answer it. You can tell them, can you kindly please explain what you would like for me to talk about with regards to this question? Don't rush to answer it. That, that period is your period to sell yourself. It is also your period to let them know that you are not just, you're not just that person that will join the team and you know you don't understand things, but you want to do them. Say, do you mind giving me a better understanding of this question you asked? That's how I always say it. Do you mind giving me a better understanding of this question you just asked me, if possible, with, a, with, with an example so that I will be able to, to answer like that? So if you don't understand a question they are asking you, my dear, don't rush to answer it. Do not rush to answer it. Rather, ask them to explain that question so that you can better understand the question as to give them the right answer for that question. I have done that. You ask me a question that I do not understand. I say, give me an example. We see that even on, on um, what's this? TV program where you win money. Say, give an example. You see, even on spelling B, spelling B exams or stuff like that, they say, define, for example, uh, figure, spell the word figure. And the student asks, can you give me an example? It is your right. That interview time is a time for you to sell yourself. And you need all the information that you need to, for you to sell yourself. Don't be surprised that they are asking about case study when they are just they are, they just use that word they themselves may not even know it then they begin to say then now you, when you ask oh can you give me an example of or can you tell me more better what you would what case study you want me to talk about because um i would like to understand your question so that i give you the right answer to the question and then you hear them say oh have you ever worked on any project? How was it? And then now you begin to be like, oh, so this case study thing was just to talk about a project we worked on. Any more questions? No more. No more questions? Then I guess we are, we are good. Anna, welcome. Do you have a question? No. I see you have been attending without your without us seeing you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Any... you. Thank you. I enjoyed the session. Thank you. That's... Any questions? No questions at the moment. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then in that case, I have to sign off now and go meet that little girl.
Okay. Thank you, ladies, okay. for hanging thank here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you. you. If you have any more oh, questions, somebody ask a question. Somebody ask a question on the chat. Please read it for me. So, what is VPN? I know the other spring, the other sprint and scrum pillars. Okay. So, what is v MVPN? MVP. What do you mean? Oh, minimal viable product. Am I right, Anna? Anna, answer that question for me. <laughs> yes, you're I, right. Okay. Yes. I said that's yes, what I right. said in my interview. I'm, you I'm, and you also mentioned that it's mostly used for project management. Yes. Um, yes, it's most, mostly used for project management. Keep it in mind, these days, it looks like that's the trap they are setting for, for Scrum Masters. <laughs> they were asking what MVP is like. Is it I, was, I also read somewhere that the minimum valuable product also is an unfinished product. Yes, it is an unfinished product. It's like when they begin a product, you know. Mm -hmm. you it's just the minimum of the, you know. Exactly. As the product they're working on. Yeah. Exactly. They are still working on it. They are building it step by step. So. Scrum well any more questions otherwise then we will say bye for this today and then just tell me what you want me to discuss on next Sunday and then right. we will see okay I have a question what does the scrum master do on the release project on the release project yeah you know when you're releasing the project to the customer what is the role of the scrum master anybody want to answer can I answer yeah go ahead the release is for the PO, the Scrum Master don't release, I believe. It's Thank the PO job to do, not the Scrum Master. Thank you. She said it all. I don't have anything to say. That's why I say anybody want to answer because I know that Scrum Masters, we are not releasing anything. We can set the schedule, but that's it. But again, in some company, in some company, what, okay, an example, what if the product owner is not available on the release day? Something happened. The customer can, the product owner is not there. How will the scrum master deal with the situation? My dear, the scrum master cannot release the product. The Maybe product they should owner, the shareholders, but the customers will not do that. They, 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 Go ahead, Anna. Scrum Sorry, master, I was the scrum master away. will not do that. Maybe one of the shareholders can stand in the place of the of the PO. Exactly what I wanted to exactly. say. A, sh a shareholder yeah. would do it, or another PO <laughs> can overshadow that one. Can can do it. Who is sitting in for that one can do it. But a scrum master, you cannot do it. The only thing you can do, I think, maybe the way you're asking the question is how they can assist during that release period. The only thing will be to make sure that they are releasing on time. Yes. You're checking in with them to make sure that it's being done when they, it's supposed to be done. That's it. You're just yes. checking in. Hey, product owner, how is the release coming up? Do you think we are going to meet deadlines? That's all you do. And he says, yes. You say, good. You sign off. <laughs> you you cannot release no product. You are then not the make a little owner. note. I just spoke. You yes. make a little you note on the side. The I said to the product the owner, product. Um, product will be released on time. Boom. That's it. Thank you. Send it to the shareholders. Yep. You put the note. Send it to the. I've spoken with him, <laughs> and he says it's gonna be done on time. Good. Okay. But if he doesn't so, do it so on time, shareholders is... be ready on time. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing you can do to help just to check in with them to make sure that they're actually meeting deadline. That's it. If, if, they, if they are facing any difficulties, if there's, if there's any impediment that will come along the way as they are planning to release, maybe. That's all you need to do. You cannot release no product. You are not a product owner. <laughs> <laughs> and you cannot develop any product. You are not a developer. <laughs> right. You are here for the team. You are exactly. here to, the, yeah, to speed up it's, it's, the work. Exactly. Making sure they are just doing their work right and you can assist them, do some little bit of pointers here and there and say, coach them. Okay, nice. It was nice talking with you, fabulous, uh, beautiful women today. So let me go and 
look for food. I woke up from sleep. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> you too. Let me go too. Bye. 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 Bye.